All right, going on this very moment, 850,000 people are celebrating their birthday right now in the U.S. alone. That's pretty much two times the population of Atlanta, Georgia, celebrating life. Globally, 19 million people are celebrating their birthday. You know, you on oh, no, I didn't know that. Okay, birthdays. <laughs> birthdays are pretty much the. Birthdays are the biggest celebration on earth, recognizing almost every religion, every culture, every country recognizes the birthday. There's no other celebration like it. So that's the problem with birthdays. You know, when we were younger, we used to look forward to birthdays, and now we kind of shy away from them. You know, they used to be so fun, and now they suck. And that's crazy because as we grow older, as we have more to be thankful of, as we have more accomplishments, we should be more thankful, more, we should have more to celebrate. But birthdays are boring, meaningless, and unchanged. The same way we celebrated birthdays 100 years ago is pretty much the same way we're celebrating birthdays today. And that's why my team and I created Nacho Birthday. Okay. Uh, so Nacho Birthday is a crowdfunding platform where users can raise funds in honor of the celebration of life for charities, projects, community events, pretty much anything you want. It's Charity Water Online for everything. It's a celebration on life, a celebration of life online. Okay. All right, so this is pretty much the home screen. So one thing I kind of wanted to make clear to not only our users, but everyone, is that on nachobirthday.com, we don't tell you how to celebrate life. That's not our job. We're just simply a tool that allows you to celebrate life. So our users take this platform and tell us what Nacho Birthday is. Tell us what the celebration of life is, whether that means celebrating life every day and not just on your birthday, or whether it means treating everyone like it's their birthday, you know, even though it's not their birthday. So different type of campaigns. We have users who say, hey, it's my birthday this year. Instead of donations, or instead of presents, excuse me, uh, please donate in honor of the Red Cross. You know, They helped me become the man who I am today. We have other users say, you know, I want to have fun tonight. I'm going out to Lucky Lou's. Here's the campaign. Donate $5. Buy me a drink. We have other users who take both the best worlds and say, hey, it's my birthday this year. It, they use our split payment feature. They say, it's my birthday this year. I'm going to donate to SaveChildren.org. Uh, Nepal just happened. I can really help. But at the same time, 20% of the funds is going to the limousine me and my friends want to get tonight. So win-win. You can't lose with that. So uh, here's just an example of a campaign. Uh, this is Ingrid. She's a UNT, University of North Texas student. 22nd birthday, she decided to donate it to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. And she actually completed her goal not too long ago. So, yeah. So, traction. We launched April 21st. We have over 3,000 registered users, uh, 300 plus campaigns, and I'm proud to say that we have raised over $20,000 for community projects, uh, charities, and other uh, campaigns going on. So that's pretty cool. And then we have notable features on Beta List and, and other cool websites. So uh, here's a, another cool outlet, uh, celebrities and social media stars. Uh, Rolanda Watts, she's a TV host. Uh, she actually started a campaign on Nacho Birthday, and Judge Joe Mattis donated $1,000 to her campaign. That was cool for us, you know? So it just shows us that celebrities will donate to celebrities. Imagine if Beyonce started this. We'll have Jay-Z, all the cool people donating to a Nacho Birthday. But the great part is that it's for something meaningful. It's not just something stupid. It's actually benefiting the world that we live in, using the day we were born. So here's just some other people. Uh, so our business model, just like normal crowdfunding uh, platforms, we take 5% of everything raised. You get to keep everything you raise, we take 5%. Uh, we see users coming back multiple times, to age 20, 21, 25, if not every year. Uh, so let's move right along. So how big can we get? Uh, so 200 million people are on Facebook. Right now, the average raised amount is 100 bucks. It's a little bit low, but that's the thing with Nacho Birthday. It's not like Kickstarter or GoFundMe. Users have smaller micro crowdfunding campaigns. So 200 million can be raised if just if just one percent of everyone on Facebook starts a campaign on their birthday. And from a show of hands, who has a birthday this year? Everyone, right? <laughs> uh, I thought so. So it's very possible. So competitors, GoFundMe, CrowdRise, Tilt, Charity Water, just to name a few. Every crowdfunding platform is pretty much a competitor. And um, here's my team, myself. I took this from Beta, Napkin to Launch, Dapo Remedy, my co-founder, and Jeevan. Some of you guys may know him. Great CTO. 
And so my call to action, if you guys know of a charity, if you guys know of an organization we can work with, I would love to talk to you guys. I don't think he's passionate at all about his project, do you? All right, questions, go. Yes. Yes. Well, right now, it's so when you give on Nacho Birthday, it's considered a, a gift. So, as far as like taxes and all that, we don't have to deal with that. All of the money that you raise. As long as, as, long as there's a benefit going to somebody, you have to actually produce what's called a portfolio suite. That's what nonprofits have to do. So, that 20% that goes to one of these meetings is not tax deductible. So exactly. So, we use a, a third party company right now called FirstGiving.org. They're our charity payment processing system. So the, the, all of the payment that goes to charity, we don't have to deal with. Although it's, it's simply a, a, a we pay is what we use to split the payments. So the money that goes to you goes directly into your account. The money that goes to charity goes directly into charity account. So with that, if you do choose a split campaign, donations are not tax deductible under that, under that option. Yes. Okay, good, qu good question. So if you're an organization or charity, one, they're having a real hard trouble trying to get millenniums on board. And this is a great way to do it, to incorporate social media. And think about it, if you have 2,000, if just say you have 2,000 volunteers throughout a given year, and you only get 50 of them to raise $1,000 a piece for your birth on their birthdays for your organization, that's $50,000 within a year. So five. Actually, I, I used to do like development fundraising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I'm curious about that, that spell. Like it's hard enough that you still only go online and you still have those options, but it's like Charity Water did that and had like birthday campaign. Or yeah, campaign exactly. Or other like crowdfunding thing. Yep. And people still aren't really, really doing that. So I'm curious to know like. So are you talking about from the user perspective or the charity's perspective? Most Well, so the, the goal of the charity in that scenario will not, you know, get them to donate to campaigns, but to actually start campaigns in honor of their birthday. So when they start campaigns, it's, you know, you can donate to your own campaign, but it's getting your friends and family involved in it. And some, half the time, they're not donating because of the charity. They're donating because of you, because it's your birthday, because they like you. So it's a great way. So it's a great way to get that extra $50,000 if you have, you know, the 2000 like I just said. It's a great way to get that extra money on the table, whether you don't leave it behind. It's a, get it on the table, yeah. There we go. I think it's a consumer-to-consumer -consumer play, right? It's there we not, go. It's yeah. not the charity putting people together. Correct. It's you having an idea. It's, yes. That's a good one, yes. Yes. You were asked, but if you donate to nonprofits, how do you partner with them? And how do you, how do you see those nonprofits approaching you directly? So great question. Again, so now, as I discussed before, we're working with firstgiving.org, but now we really want to gear into the North Dallas community charitable uh, world. So uh, we're kind of trying to cut out firstgiving.org in a way and work with these charities hand in hand, where that way the money can go directly to the charities and we can make every uh, uh, donation tax deductible. And that kind of saves the charity some money in, in, the, in the long run, and uh, it's, a, it's a selling point for us. Yeah. So if I want to do a campaign for a charity, um, do they need to be listed on the site commercially? Uh, right now, yes. Yeah. So if you look at our site, if you have the opportunity, I encourage everyone to go check it out. Just check it out, list of charities. We have about 350 charities that we picked, the top charities anyways. So that's, that's how uh, it's going on so far. But in the future, like I said, we're going to have feature charities where it's North Texas charities, Texas you know, home charities will receive more of the money in real time, quicker, and just more beneficial to the, that organization. In the back. Uh, well, I, I 
there is no Facebook restrictions on this. It's, it's just like you see a GoFundMe campaign on Facebook, you'll see a, a Nacho Birthday campaign. So users can click and share their campaign. It's just like sharing an article on uh, Facebook or Twitter or any other social media platform. So I, I don't see that ha ever happening. 